The natural world is full of incredible forms of communication, evident in the ways animals interact with each other. Even trees and plants communicate through a process called jasmination. While humans may take pride in our technology-based methods of communication, animals have been using sophisticated forms of communication for much longer. This video will explore the communication methods of a few selected animal species in Africa. Number 1. Vocalization Vocalization is an obvious form of communication, utilized not only by humans, but by animals as well. While some animals make audible sounds, others make inaudible ones. The giraffe, for instance, makes use of infrasonic communication, this means that most of the sounds they make are inaudible to our human ears, but with the correct instruments, one can actually pick up on their grunts, moans, and even whistles. These super low-pitched sounds have the advantage of travel distance. It is believed that animals can communicate with one another over several kilometers. I always like to talk from experience, and I can happily confirm that giraffes do indeed make audible sounds as well, although this is not very common. I have heard the odd grunt here and there, so at least that dispels the myth that giraffes are mute or silent animal. Now, what animal could we talk about next that actually makes audible sounds? Lions come to mind, but that would be too cliched. How about we rather shift our focus on the sneaky spotted hyena? If you have ever been on safari, you may have heard the famous hyena laugh in the darkness as you just climb into your bed. These wonderful animals, yes, I said wonderful, actually have a very in-depth language that allows them to communicate on all sorts of levels. Whines, grunts, growls, and even laughs assist hyenas in getting their point across. They also seem to produce this sound, generally around kills as individuals move in on each other's feeding spaces, kind of like being called out for not following acceptable social distancing protocols. By the way, that laughing sound is merely produced to demarcate territory, strengthen their clans, and on occasion call in backup so they can chase off the pesky lions from their kill. Number 2. Olfactory Within us humans, the sense of smell has proven to be a powerful force in terms of nostalgic memories, a whiff of something that has the power to transport us right back to some very special moments in time. Thankfully though, we have mostly learned to use our sense of smell in order to figure out if something is edible or not. I say thankfully because animals still use this powerful sense in far more should we say, distasteful ways. Nonetheless, it is vital in the everyday happenings of just about every animal we encounter. Take the example of a rhino. Rhinos are the absolute definition of that famous saying, a creature of habits, especially the male species. Africa is crisscrossed by the ancient paths left by not only elephants but also rhinos. But where do these paths lead to? I can almost guarantee that a rhino's pathway either leads to a water source, mud wallow, or a latrine of sorts, called a midden. They are fairly pedantic about where they use the toilet, often traveling miles just to get to one of their favorite spots. However, along the way, the males at least will drag their feet through the soil in various places before spraying a bit okay maybe a lot of urine back over the scratching in the ground that they have just created. Every territorial animal relies on their territory carrying their unique fragrance to warn imposters as to who they are messing with, but also to let females know just whose territory they are within. It is for this very reason that all territorial animals do the rounds every few days. It's all about keeping your scent fresh and vibrant. I have digressed though, Let's get back to the midden. Territorial males will make use of several middens around their territory. These middens can grow rather large over time as the male returns time and time again to defecate. However, it is not just him that will defecate there. 
Females moving through the area will also drop some dung at these middens, and even younger subordinate males in the area will leave something behind. It is fascinating to note that the territorial male will leave his mark right in the middle of the midden every single time to show strength and dominance. Furthermore, he will actually trample the dung to break it up, with the idea being that this helps not only to release more of his scent, but also to cover his feet in the odor so that as he walks around, he spreads his own scent. The females and younger males will leave their calling cards towards the periphery of the midden. Essentially, this creates one smelly situation, but the rhinos are very clued up on how to make sense of the whole thing, knowing exactly when one of the passing females is an ostress and what age she might be. Conversely, the females will be able to tell, through just a mere whiff, as to which male is dominant in the area, as well as his age. This helps the girls in deciding whether or not to stay in the area in order to potentially mate with the territorial bull or to move on to the next territory where the male smells a bit better. Number 3. Tactile When we think of communication through touch, we often envision a kiss on the cheek or a warm hug from a loved one. Unfortunately, in today's world, such displays of affection are not always possible for humans, especially after the outbreak of coronavirus. However, animals never got the memo about this virus, and it really won't take you long while on safari to come across some species or another enjoying some sort of embrace with each other. The biggest culprit of this, well the biggest of everything really, is the African elephant. Elephants are very touchy-feely animals, and they love to make use of touch to convey a particular feeling or message. This form of communication is usually administered by the hugely tactile trunk, just another use for this most advantageous appendage. They use their trunk to guide their young by just gently nudging their babies in the right direction. On occasion, they will use their trunk to dish out a bit of discipline, Studies have also suggested that elephants will put their trunks into each other's mouths as a form of embrace, or to show compassion and reassurance. The giant pachyderms are not the only species to practice this type of communication. Think along the lines of lions nuzzling each other to strengthen the bonds within their prides, or baboons grooming one another, or even zebra resting their heads on their buddy's back. All of these are just touching scenes of animals enjoying time spent with each other. Number 4. Visual Visual communication is an important aspect of the animal kingdom, and it can be observed in various species. For instance, when we introduce a new cat to our house, we often see our resident feline puffing up its fur, arching its back, and sometimes hissing, this is an example of visual communication, as the cat is trying to look as big and intimidating as possible. In the wild, we can see similar behavior in the African wild cat, although it is rare to observe them during confrontations. However, in the bush, we can observe the communication of other animals, such as hippos. If you are lucky enough to enjoy an evening sundowner at a watering hole with hippos, you may see them perform a classic yawn. This behavior is not a yawn, but rather a warning signal to let others know about the size of their mouth and teeth. Hippos can be quite grumpy animals, so it's best to heed their warnings and keep a safe distance. They may also produce grunting sounds as a vocal form of communication. Many other species utilize visual communication, such as leopards snarling at intruding hyenas to show off their teeth, or male birds changing their appearance during the breeding season. It's fascinating to observe the different ways animals use visual cues to communicate with each other. Number 5. Pheromonal Sadly, we humans seem to have lost the ability to sense pheromones. Well, at least that's what the studies would suggest. There is a very special organ required to sense them. This is called the vomeronasal organ, which is also known as Jacobson's organ. 
While we have remnants of this organ, it isn't anything developed enough to sense pheromones. Thus, it is believed that if humans do in some way sense pheromones, it would be through old-fashioned smell. However, we're here to discuss animals, and the group of animals that comes to mind most in this respect is cats. They just have such a visual way of showing that they are sensing pheromones. We call this the flame and grimace, and it is not at all limited to just the cats, but because of their mighty teeth, it's them who look most interesting doing it. This usually occurs when a lioness urinates. If there are any males with her, they often become very interested in this action. Soon thereafter, the male will approach the site where the lioness urinated, bend down, sniff intensely, and then stand back up while curling his lips back, displaying his huge teeth, squeezing his eyes closed, and looking like he is visibly in pain. What he is doing during this time is basically forcing the pheromone towards the base of his nasal cavity behind the incisors within his mouth where the ducts to the vomeronasal organ are found. From here, the pheromone can be sensed to determine things such as the lioness's mating readiness, age, health, and status within the pride. One thing for sure is that it really is a fun thing to see and to photograph while out on safari.